All right, welcome to A Growing Concern. We're going to talk about the United States Post Office tonight. Uh, the, you've probably seen a little bit of this on the, uh, on the cable news or the local news. And uh, as is the case with your, with your uh, uh, broadcast and, and corporate news, they don't go as deep into things as we can here on public access television. We're going to have a whole hour to talk about this. And we're not going to talk it to death because this is a pretty wide issue and it brings in a lot of other issues like we've talked a lot of uh, in the past a lot about uh, the corporate domination of our, of our elections and the corporate domination of our environment and uh, we're going to get into that here get a little bit again tonight too because the the uh, the whole thing that has been moving forward with the with the post office is uh, attempts to privatize it and so I want to um, welcome my guest here I forgot my notes so we've got <laughs> Uh, is it Tom Richardson? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we have Brad Mellon. Brad Mellon. Yep. And then we have Willie Groeschel. Willie Groeschel. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. I get that ball right there. Great. There and so uh, I think we'll go a little off with Willie. I kind of gave a thumbnail introduction, but that left a lot of area to, to nail down. So folks out there that are in, in uh, that are watching, they may not. They may think, well, thirty-five hundred uh, post offices have to be closed because. Post office is losing money. Uh, the, the, the the superficial things that we hear typically talked about this issue. Uh, is any of that really accurate? Well, no, not really. When it comes right down to it, um, there are solutions, but they're not the ones that you're mainly hearing out there in the public. Um, I think the reason that Tom, Brad, and I are here tonight is ultimately to talk about keeping the service in the postal service you know it's a service business and the only way it's going to stay viable and be a successful business and serving everybody equally regardless of where you live what your income is you know being the great equalizer that it is right now is if you allow it to stay giving good service and providing service to everybody um, and that's all possible but uh, but what's being proposed just doesn't work right now um, there are some good things out there that are being proposed but the stuff you're hearing publicly about the closures and that um, all they are is the beginning of a death spiral mm -hmm. um, which in turn would lead to uh, private corporations coming in taking over the profitable sections of the postal service um, and meanwhile anybody that uh, <coughs> Anybody that lives in rural communities, anybody that lives in poor neighborhoods will either not have any service, or if they do have service, it will cost them an ultra premium. And we're, none of that's necessary because the financial losses the post office has shown over the past, since 2006, 90% um, of those come from a congressional mandate that's forced the postal service to pay uh, for retiree, future retiree health benefits. We're the only company in the entire country, public or private, that's required to pay for future retirees health benefits 75 years into the future, and it has to be done over a 10 year span. So the post office mm -hmm. went to be in a company that since, um, since 1970 till now was basically run as a break even company, as a company that hasn't received any taxpayer money for 30 years now. You know, the post office runs off the revenue from the postage and the shipping that we sell. You know, we're self-sustaining, we're not, we're not on the taxpayer's dime at all. We don't even show up in the books because we're not taking taxpayer money and like I said, we haven't done that for 30 years. Um, and if it wasn't for this one payment in this future retiree health benefits plan, which each year has been at least $5.5 .5 billion, if not more, uh, the post office actually from 2006 through 2010 during the you know worst economy that we've seen in most of our lifetimes uh, would have actually turned a profit of over 600 million dollars if it wasn't for that one payment they were forced to make every year. And that's where all the losses mm -hmm. came from during that time. It's a uh, you know the financial crisis is really an artificial one that was created by bad legislation pushed through in 2006 um, by President Bush and Congress that created this unnecessary um, financial burden that nobody else has to deal with. Nobody has to deal with. Now, Brad, you're retired, right? Right. So you, how long did you work? 30 years for him? Uh, 30 years for the post office, 36 for the government total. So that's that's a long time. So, yeah. and uh, you didn't mention when this law was passed. You just said the Bush 2006. administration. So right. yeah, yeah, 2006. 2006. Right. So were you working there in 2006? Uh, yes. So was you know what, what was the situation? Uh, did was anybody aware of this ahead of time? Were able to try to stop it? No, or did they it, just jam it, it through with it, another bill. It was it was pushed through in the lame duck session of 2006. It was pushed through. No, it wasn't an actual vote. It was a voice vote. So we can't really tell 
who voted for it and who voted against it. It was just a vo voice vote. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Willie pointed out, uh, after uh, the bill passed in 2007, they had a uh, $5.5 billion payment plus there was, I believe it was a $2.9 billion added on to that for that first year. So that's money they have to come up and say they bring in that much money and they, they have that $5 billion and a $2 billion. They have to put that aside somewhere then. Right. Mm -hmm. Right off the top before right. they can show a profit or loss. Then. Right. Yeah. And that guarantees a loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so far they have paid in approximately $20 billion into the fund. Uh, which uh, would uh, finance it for, I believe, 20 years? Actually, given the fact that since then, through attrition, we've lost, I believe, the Postal Service is already through retirement and the fact that they haven't hired any career employees in about five years, I think they've lo the Postal Service has lost close to 100,000 career employees to retirement. So the amount of people that have to be covered is decreasing. So I think actually the amount of money in that fund is probably sufficient to cover 25 to 35 years worth of future retiree health right. benefits. And with the way things are going, you know, they just keep talking about cutting more and more jobs and getting rid of more and more people. So we'll see. And it's, not, it's Tom, it's not only jobs though, it's, it's, it's the, it's what, 3,500 post offices? Hmm. Yep, post offices and processing plants uh, around the country. And uh, like here in Oregon, they would close all the processing plants except for Portland and Medford. So that would require mail uh, mailed in Eugene to come be trucked up to Portland and processed and then trucked back down to Eugene, for example, which is extremely costly and uh, just basically designed to make us lose money and look worse, lower our service standards, all of these things, which uh, would drive customers away. There was a, a report by the Postal Regulatory Commission that was attempted to keep secret that showed how much these moves by Postmaster Donahoe would cost the Postal Service. And uh, his uh, closing of plants and post offices and all these delays would cost us $5.2 billion a year. And that's just the first year's projection. Mm hmm. That's that's quite a bit. Yeah. And you know, it, it seems I saw something on TV about this a while back, and I can't remember where it was, but uh, it it was a a video or something, and and uh, it, it talked about all the different things that the post office can do that, to bring it up to the modern era. And there was an awful lot of things that they could be doing. And are you familiar with any any of those? Any of you there? I'm oh yeah. No, but one one thing to remember: any modernization that ha that would happen in the post office has to be approved by Congress. Is it always been that way? Yes. Yes, it always and yes. it still is that way. Um, there there are a ton of opportunities out there for the postal service to expand its its options and services. It's just without Congress giving us the <clears throat> the freedom to do so, our hands are tied. Mm -hmm. um, and you know. We're the only agency in the entire country that goes to every single address in this nation. We've got the, what's known as the last mile network. Every single day at my station, I carry out a Piedmont, Martin Luther King Jr. station, every single day UPS truck drops up, pulls up and drops off about a pallet worth of packages because we go to every single address. We make deliveries that nobody else makes. And all the other c private companies depend on us for that too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Right. The one interesting thing is that the post office delivers to approximately 120 million addresses in the country. FedEx and UPS only deliver to about 20 million. Mm -hmm. So if they eliminate the post office, what's going to happen to those 100 million addresses that aren't serviced? And I understand that a lot of the post offices are going to close down or are going to be rural. Yeah. And whereas here in the, in the urban areas, people have alternatives. I mean, they can w go to another part of town and mail it or something. But if you're urban and they shut it down, it's, it's you know, miles or dozens of miles, it would seem like, to get somewhere to, to mail that. Right. And yeah. is that being addressed at all in this? Yeah, it, it's been discussed. There's actually been quite a bit of movement in, uh, here in the state of Oregon and some of the rural areas as far as getting people out to uh, hear, have the voices heard about the fact that they don't want their postal service shut down. Um, 
and most of the offices that they're looking about at shutting down, most of them are at least 15 miles away from the next closest post office, if not more, um, that, they're, that they've got proposed for, for shutdown. And it just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to take it away from the public when you've got a retail outlet that's a government retail outlet. I look at that and I say to myself, why don't they go ahead and expand and offer like you know, park passes, where if you need, if you've got a national park or a state park nearby that you need to have an access pass, why can't people come there and yeah. do that? Why can't people come there to do renewals of other, you know, government forms and whatnot? Fishing licenses. Yeah, fishing licenses. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could even go so far as to, in the rural communities where DMVs aren't anywhere near, they could go there and do the paperwork for their driver's license renewal stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, th these are all possibilities, but again, they all would have to go through Congress before they could happen. Right. And yeah. we're subject to intense lobbying by competitors as well, so they limit what the Postal Service can do. For example, FedEx Kinko's uh, lobbied to get uh, copying machines out of uh, postal lobbies. Uh, uh, and it's things like that. Our hands are tied, you know. They can lobby much more effectively than we can. They have so much more money. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it keeps us from evolving and staying current. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, a lot of people say that the Citizens United that allows you know money to be put into these elections from from uh, corporations and from unions, but the, the, the amount of money that is being put in from the corporations to compared to the unions are so small. You you can't compete with those those corporate lobbyists. No, and we can't outshout them either. I mean, the the news and uh, you know the the corporate uh, uh, spokesmen and stuff like that. I mean. We try as hard as we can, but we cannot get our point out as loudly as they can. Right, and we means you to the letter carrier union. What is that? Yep. National Association of Letter Carriers. Yep. And right. locally, you hear you're what eighty two. Branch eighty two. Branch yeah. eighty two. And uh, you know, and back in the mid '60s, I think it was '67, '68. I worked for the post office in California as a as a, a mail sorter for I don't know a couple of years when I was first married. Uh, two and a half an hour, two sixty-five an hour back then, and a lot of things have changed since then. But a lot of things haven't as well. And, and, and it, uh, the post office has been providing that service since what Ben Franklin days, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, seventeen seventy-five. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, the, the, this thing that I mentioned that I saw. I wish I could remember where I saw it. And you mentioned already one of the two of the things that they could that they could do at the post office to bring them up bring them up to date. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that case, not so much bring them up to date, but to provide services that are that are uh, useful for the community, whether it's fishing licenses or DMV or or uh, any, any of these uh, any of these other things. Yeah. And but it seems to me that the the uh, lobbyists are working to delete services rather than provide more services. Yeah. 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 We could. Uh, we have the largest computer network. In, was another in, in the world, yeah. I believe, and so we could use all of our, uh, there's more post offices than there are Starbucks and McDonald's. So we could make them Wi-Fi hotspots, we could have secure uh, emails. Uh, there used to be, up until the 60s, I believe, small account banking in America where people could uh, save small amounts of money in their post office, which would be great for people nowadays that don't have much money, they can't afford a real bank account, and, uh, you know, immigrant uh, people like that that just need to save a little bit of money, but you know that's been taken off the books as well. Save a little bit of money and then get the money order to send it the remittances they send back to Mexico or to wherever. Because I've read that next to petroleum, the remittances coming from this country are the second biggest revenue source in Mexico. Hmm. And so that is another another area that I remember reading about in that or seeing on that video that you're talking about banking as well. So it seems like. Rather than make the post office uh, a boon to the community, they're trying to make it drag the community down. Yeah. They meaning whatever these corporate entities are. I was surprised that you mentioned Kinko's, but it makes perfect sense. Yeah, well, uh, UPS started putting in their express mail drop boxes right at the same time postal service uh, express mail drop boxes were being pulled off the street. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're not really in control of our own fate in some regards. Right. Well, Brad, you've been there for so many years, not mm -hmm. too many years, but so <laughs> many years. Uh, 
have you really witnessed that much of a, of a change and, and, and uh, damage being done by the internet? I mean, everybody thinks, oh, the post office is going down, you know, like, like, uh, like booksellers and newspapers and all that because of the internet. But then again, people are buying things online, right. they have to ship it. That, that's so has it really done that much damage? That's the change that I've noticed, that with the internet, people are buying things online and we're getting a lot more packages now. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the post office is inexpensive. And it is cheaper to, to send through the post office a lot of times than with the competitors. Yeah. So, so a lot of people would use uh, UPS then instead, I would imagine. Right. Yeah. Well, a lot of times we're the low cost competitor. So by eliminating us, they're free to raise their rates as high as they would like to go. Well, that would make sense, sure, because you, you, the post office being the common denominator that everybody thinks of when they mail something, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I know people that uh, that buy little video video equipment here and there, and and uh, I think it's always delivered by the mail. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mo most international stuff um, that comes overseas, I I see the majority of it coming through the mail stream. Um, when people are ordering ordering components and that, especially stuff from Hong Kong and Asia, most of that comes through the mail. Um, in a lot of cases, they will send it through the mail registered because that is the most secure, guaranteed way to make sure something gets there. Mm -hmm. You know, because as soon as it goes in the mail stream is registered, it's accounted for every step of the way, and whoever's name is attached to it is financially accountable for it until it mm -hmm. gets to where it needs to be. So, sure, yeah. Well, that all makes sense. And you know, when we were talking about before the show, we uh, you mentioned a couple websites, and uh, hopefully they've been brought up on the air a few times, and. Uh, one was a local local website, I believe. Oh, uh, wasn't the dot com a, a the lo local website? What say save the post office or is it the postal service? Com. Postal service. I believe. Save the postal service dot com. I think they'll get that. That's up on a national. There. That's a national. Right. Right. And they'll the other one, on the actually, they're both national ones. And the other one is uh, save America's postal service dot org, and that's one that. The there we go. Yeah, those are the two. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's also a phone number for the... For yeah, the, uh, for the uh, branch hall if they want to call over there and talk to, to the branch officers. Obviously, nobody's there right now because... <laughs> <laughs> right. During no normal yeah. business hours. Sure. Yeah. Monday through Friday, yeah, 8 to 5. Now, if a person was to go to one of them websites, what, what are the folks that are doing these websites, what are they, what are they offering people that um. people can do in order to... to to deal with this issue. The, the middle one that was up there, the Save America's Postal Service .org, um, actually has a link to a petition that you could digitally sign. Um, these are petitions that we've basically put together that are being sent back to Congress, um, mm -hmm. letting them know that the you know public still values its postal service. Um, I don't know how many total signatures that we've got at this point, but we've already collected over a million signatures around the country on I that. Think I mean, so. locally here in the Portland area, we've been very proactive, and I think in the Portland area, we've probably at this point collected 15,000 signatures on different petitions and postcards and that um, that we've sent to all of our congressional reps or senators, and we're also sending them back to President Obama because he could play a role in doing the right thing too. Mm -hmm. so. And well, so could the Postmaster General. And what what side is he on here? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to get a reaction. He, he compared I, us to Greece. Oh, really? I'm, yeah. I'm afraid that's the fox in the chicken coop. So yeah. he might be the dynamic he, that's, that's doing all that. He of seems that. to be intent on on uh, dismantling the post office. And he, he's appointed, right? Right. Right. And who appointed him? Postal Board of Governors, which right. unfortunately the majority of them were appointed by uh, President Bush. And so that isn't something that gets changed when you get a new administration then? It can. No. There's a lot of vacancies in there that haven't been filled. There's right. a lot of vacancies on the Postal Board of Governors that have just been left open and haven't been filled since Obama took over. And there again, it's a, a problem that we have in modernizing the post office. Everything has to go through Congress and doesn't seem like much of anything can get through Congress these days. Yeah, they can't even wind their watch when they have to agree on what time to do it, I would mm -hmm. think. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's unfortunate. This fellow that is the, sur the uh, Surgeon General, <laughs> I, guess, General. I guess he is kind of a Surgeon General, <laughs> what he's trying to do, uh, operate on, on the, where did he come from? Uh, he came up through the ranks. In the last two Postmaster Generals all worked for the Post Office ahead of time and came up through. Um, our prior one, uh, Potter, who just retired, what, three years ago, was it? I believe so. Something like that. 
he retired, uh, walked out the door, and uh, and since then he's now the uh, CEO for uh, Reagan, and, Reagan Dulles. and Dulles Airports in Washington D.C. So he's been handed over a job that I'm sure is paying him seven digits a year, mm -hmm. even though he came up through the ranks of the Postal Service and was the Postmaster General during arguably one of the worst financial times in the history of the post office. And, and so he got that as a spot afterwards. Um, our current postmaster, General Donahoe, uh, he's under fire right now. Um, I know that uh, Representative Brian Higgins, a Democrat out of New York, he's right now in the process of passing around a letter um, in Congress uh, that's basically a, a direct order to the Postal Board of Governors for the immediate removal of the postmaster general. I don't know how many people are signing on to it, but I do know that it's just, it's something that just recently has been going around. So Congress can yank his chain then? Well, they have to go through the Postal Board of Governors because they're the ones that ultimately make the decision, but they can they can put the pressure on to try and do that. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. there are some things that the people can do. They can sign the pledge, they can, they can uh, well, I guess not being living in New York, they can't do much, this fellow that's from New York, yeah. but uh, what are some of the things they can do? I mean, does, does Wyden and Merkley have anything to say about any of this? Actually, we're very lucky here in Oregon. Um, the two, there are two bills, one in the House, one in the Senate, um, that right now aren't going to see the light of day because the the committees that decide what come out won't have anything to do with them. But uh, on the House side, uh, Peter DeFazio put to put out a resolution, um, House Resolution uh, three five nine one. It would basically not only solve the existing financial problems, but provide more flexibility. Basically, it's got all the right fixes in it and would be able to put the post office back on track and keep it around and growing and serving everybody for years and years to come. And on the Senate side, Wyden, um, our Senator Wyden, is one of the people that's put forward a Senate bill, um, 1853 is the number for that one. And that one is basically the, the sister bill of the one that DeFazio has. If both of those bills were to go through tomorrow, we'd be sitting pretty. The post office would, would have its legs underneath it. We'd be able to modernize. We'd be able to invest in our future, you know, use the technologies. I know, you know, I know our local representative, uh, Blumenauer, Earl Blumenauer, would love to see the Postal Service fleet go green would love to see us have an all-electric fleet. That's a Mo really good place to to, uh, to uh, provide examples of how we can do things. Oh yeah, I mean, thing. we've got the largest fleet of vehicles in the entire nation. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine how much, you know, you'd have a huge cost up front to modernize it, mm -hmm. but once you did, could you imagine how many hundreds of millions of dollars we'd save in petroleum every year? You or know. the stimulus uh, change in the fleet over. Yeah. As far as jobs, you mean? Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Other union jobs. Too. Yeah. Sure, sure. Right. Yeah, you could get things back in, uh, back in uh, Detroit, back on track. They could totally modernize, because as big as the orders it would be to modernize the postal fleet would provide them the means to get the technology down to where it is efficient and more affordable. And it could be something that, you know, would make it so that electric and other alternate means would be more accessible mm -hmm. to the public because it you know really and really reduced the carbon footprint too yeah in the process which is yeah. huge i don't know how many millions of vehicles were or what it we're talking about here but yeah but uh you know how many like how many routes are here in town say <laughs> you've been there a long time you might have an idea well, well that's a good question i retired from the evergreen uh dcu and we had i believe 64 mm -hmm. routes that in that one station alone Wow. And we have, what, 32 different? 32, I think it's, yeah, something like 32 stations in Portland. My, my station, um, we've got 26 routes up there. Um, we have 30. He's got and 30. And then there's special deliveries and different things on top of that, too. Yep. Oh, yeah. Collection right. drivers, exactly. clerks, uh, yeah. vehicle maintenance, mail handlers, you mm -hmm. know, all of these people as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you look at the proposed if you just look at the plant closures they're talking about, you know, closing down the plant in Salem, the plant in Bend, the plant in Pendleton, and uh, the plant in Eugene, you know, if you look at the at the closure of those, where's the factoring in of how much more gas and energy mm -hmm. they're going to have to use for all those extra hundreds of miles they're going to have to truck the mail back and forth and back and forth. Sure. I mean, it's makes me think that maybe the petroleum industry might have been one of those lobbyists. It could be. <laughs> well. <laughs> it could be. It's hard to say. 
hard to say, but yeah, it could but be. But you're talking about nationwide, not just Oregon. Oh, so, yeah. So no, this is happening everywhere. This happening everywhere, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, um, and when they close the post offices, the uh, carriers are going to have to drive further to deliver the mail, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And a yeah. lot of them will have to drive further just getting to and from work every right. day, too. Right. So on top of this, you know, what we're talking about with the inc increased gasoline and the, and the, uh, the, the loss of, of the, all the different post office workers, you're going to have shittier service, too, probably. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, they've, they've already talked about um, the decrease of service standards. Right now, first class mail takes typically one to two days to get to where it's going. And they're talking about cutting it back to three to four days. You know, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be a situation where if these plants close, if you've got, if you're living in Salem and you need to have something mailed across town in Salem, it's going to take at least two to three days because it's going to have to come up to Portland, get sorted, truck back down there. So even local, deliveries. even local stuff. Yeah, well, that's insane. Yeah. Well, it's going to drive customers into the arms of FedEx and UPS with oh. a higher price for their service as well. Yeah. Well, because they'll have a, they'll have basically have a monopoly, I would imagine, or close to it anyway. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what they call us a, a public opoly, which they've been trying to break for a long time. Mm, that I didn't think about when you were talking about that. I just I didn't think about it, but I just more or less assumed that local mail would stay local, and they would they would mm -hmm. just sort yeah. it there. No, 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 no. The same thing, Eugene. All the mail that's going to be mailed in Eugene, even if it's for Eugene, going to be trucked all the way up to Portland processed it and sorted and then trucked all the way back before it gets delivered. So Eugene and Portland might have overnight service, but that'd be about it then, possibly. Actually, as far as places it would still have overnight service, it's hard to say. I mean, we've already had some reports that what will end up happening locally here in the Portland area is that because they have to process mail from all over the state coming in, that, that what will happen is they'll do everything for all the outlying areas first and the mail for Portland won't be processed until later in the day. It could be a situation where we as existing letter carriers aren't even allowed to start work until 9 o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock. You know, they don't know because nobody's actually seemed to sit down and take the time to figure out you know, how it's going to work, what the constraints are going to be. I mean, there might be a situation where you know, if we're not starting work till 10 o'clock, and we're working an eight-hour day, we're not going to be getting off till 6.30. Once you get into the fall and the winter, we're going to be out there in the middle of the dark every single day, and that's just not safe. That's that's not really doable. As it is, you know, getting dark at 4.30 on a cloudy day, it's, it's probably some issues with that. Yeah, yeah, oh, we definitely. already have issues with after dark delivery, mm. yeah. And it, and with this, it will, I imagine, it'll only get worse. Mm. Yeah. So how many miles did you guys, or did you or do you walk in a day? Around 10. Around 10 miles? Yeah. yeah. yeah a lot definitely. of stairs. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stairs, a lot of stairs. Well, I can remember when I worked in California, I was a sorter. I, I was on the state scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't on the city scheme. I had to know all the different cities and all the sectional centers and where they went. It's surprising how much stuff you can put in your head and hold on to it. I you remember re those zip codes? I can still remember a lot of it <laughs> yeah. since 1967, 68. <laughs> right. And that stuff sticks with you when you just pound it in there hour after hour. Yeah. And, uh, but it's it's uh, in incredible that you that you can hold on to that information for so long. But they did send me out one day on a, on a on a on a route that somebody was sick or something, and it was a lot of walking. It was 106. You know, you got to deal with that same mm -hmm. stuff up here. You're not oh, yeah. too often 106. Not the 106 part, but you know, but yeah. you know, sleet, rain, heat, and all that. You have to deal with that. And and uh, I don't know. Maybe the maybe your competition can say that neither rain nor sleet nor hail will stop them too as well. I don't know, but but uh, they don't they don't do it as consistently and 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 and, and have the the. Um, the tradition that, that the post office has. Well, they don't have to walk either. They just drive their vehicle up, honk, run up to the door and come back. We have to walk up and down stairs. Oh, okay. In the dark, That's right. That's in the rain, we wear these headlights like a miner. <laughs> and it's, you know, we're, we're trying to read the mail and not step off a crack and, you know, fall into a hole and all this stuff or, you know, look out for dogs and mm -hmm. it's really tricky. Yeah, I imagine all the years you've been with it, there's been some stories or, of uh, the, the different things that people have had to put up with. Oh, yeah. But one thing you were mentioning, that the, all the things that, that a carrier remembers, the one thing that, that, having been retired for a couple of years now, the one thing I remember the most is my customers. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I knew 
you know, all the customers. Uh, I knew the older ones, the disabled ones, and uh, I could keep an eye on them. And there are programs within the post office where if a carrier sees an elderly person who maybe they've gotten sick. Or they're they getting a little get, fuzzy And or they can't something. get around. Yeah. We can contact the county who will send someone out to check on them and connect them up with, with programs that are available that can mm -hmm. help them out. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. gatekeepers program is, mm -hmm. is a big one. Yeah. Uh, the uh, carrier alert program nationwide with is set up through the NALC. That, that's a good point. In fact, that might be the, the primary point. It's it's a, it's it's a community service, but it's also community. Right. Community, yeah. exactly. You know, and you're and not you're not going to get that right. from the, from the UPS. And there's nothing that the internet can do to keep keep an eye on uh, someone, an elderly person who's living alone. Mm -hmm. The and carrier knows them. Right. The internet doesn't. And the competition, UPS and them, they're not going to be delivering mail. No. What's going to be happening is your deliveries are going to have to be more sporadic or or right. whatever. And and then you won't have that possibly that connection with the elderly mm -hmm. and, yeah. the, and the folks that need that need your help. That, that is something that I hadn't factored in there. It makes perfect sense because you're there somewhat the same time every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know I'm, I'm out there doing home services as far as mowing lawns and stuff. And, and some of these elderly people... It drives me crazy sometimes, but that's that's a high point of their day when someone stops by and they yeah. can talk to them. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that must be you know that must be a really big deal, yeah. and and you get to know these people by name, and and uh, you, you not that that you necessarily know everything that they're receiving, but you know basically some of the some of the things that they're getting. You know you know the dynamics of their life. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. I know people that go to carriers that go to weddings. They go to graduations. Mm -hmm. They go to birthday parties. They're a part of these other, uh, their customers' families. I mean, they're very close. Mm -hmm. Well, this whole thing about corporate personhood, uh, the corporate dynamic is the opposite of community, the opposite yeah. of persons. It is. And in, in, in this case, is a really good example of it, it seems to me, when when uh, that, that community dynamic is going to be, if not eradicated, at least lessened to a great degree. And it's not something that then maybe even people even thought about until they're going to start to lose it. Yeah. 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 That's something that our competitors can't come close to uh, and is one of our strongest points. You know, the, the public really does like their mailman for the most part. My dog doesn't, but other than that. Right. <laughs> well, they, they like it because we're the high point of their day most yeah, of the time. that's true. They get the adrenaline flowing a little bit. Yeah, so <laughs> that is something that uh, the corporatists are definitely attacking. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's kind of like, you know, the Postal Service was created to knit the country together, and now it's like, you know, they're dismantling it. They're mm -hmm. deconstructing it, yeah. you know. Yeah, unraveling it. Yeah. Well, that it all comes in that word privatize, and you know they're trying to privatize so many different commodities in this country that uh, you know they tried to come, they're trying and they are succeeding in some places that uh, different cities' waterworks have been privatized, mm -hmm. and as I think a couple of them have to back up on that because it, it's a disaster, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and and and. Uh, you know, a lot to be said against the government, but in some things, the government <laughs> does a better job yeah. when you take the profit out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what they're trying to do is put the profit back into something that's, that hasn't been a profit-oriented, I forget the terminology you use, but a profit-oriented ori agency for since the beginning. Yeah. 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 The post office is, is meant to be run as a break-even industry, and it has right. been for a long, long time. It was only once the new laws got put into place that required the payment that you know, you ch you change the rules by 5.5 billion dollars overnight. It's hard. It's hard to all of a sudden reach in your pockets and pull that much more revenue out, especially when the economy goes down the, right. down the toilet. That's that a time. that's 5.5 billion a year, a year that they right. have to set aside into a fund. Yeah, right. and kind of go back and you know people kind of tune in late. So that's basically what what uh, you were saying here at the very beginning. That 5.5 billion dollars has to be put aside into a fund to pay forward or pay ahead the the employee's retirement for 75 years. Yeah, just the health benefits. Just the health benefits. Yeah. Just right. the health and that's benefits. 75 years, that's for people that aren't even born yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we haven't hired anybody in what, four five, years, no, five years? No, five years now, yeah. We haven't and, hired any right. career people for five the years. The amount of overtime is going up every year. You know, uh, I think already this year it's up 13%. Yeah. So the existing employees, carriers, and other clerks and stuff as well are being forced to work much more overtime. 
And so for carriers, especially the average age of carriers is 50. So when we're being made to work harder than ever before, our bodies break down that much faster. And so it's getting much more difficult than it was even a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Brad, you were had something you were, you were wanting to bring into the conversation there. <laughs> Did it go away? Yep, it, it, it went away. Well, that's okay. It'll come yeah. back as we're, we're talking about other things. Well. Did you get, yeah, did you I, get it there? I, I got it back. <laughs> All right. I, I was just going to say the this five and a half billion dollars a year that the post office is paying in, that's to prefund health benefits seventy five years in advance. But yet, the opponents of the post office want to dismantle and discontinue the post office. So, if the benefits are paid for seventy five years in advance, what's going to happen to that money? Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've heard said that it's that already one? gone. Well, yeah, it's over in Afghanistan or something. We had another that's, large that's fund. That's a really good point. Yeah. We had another fund that was uh, over due to our uh, health care and accounting. We had seventy-five. Well, it was fifty to seventy-five it was, it was, billion dollars yeah, set aside of our money in this other pot, and uh, it was recommended that that be returned to the postal service as well to help us with our budgetary problems. But no soap on that either. Mm -hmm. That was with the pension plans. Yeah, yeah the pension CSRS, plans. Yeah, over CSRS, payments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you hear a lot about the uh, public employees and all that, like in, back in Michigan, I was at Wisconsin, when they were going after the unions there and all that. Mm -hmm. But they never mentioned postal employees. And, you know, you, you folks are in a different, different yeah. category th than the, uh, what was it, the public service that, employees or whatever? That was state employees. Oh, those are state, but right. you guys are all federal. Yeah, we're federal. Well, and I'm yeah. surprised they haven't gone after you as well. Well, because you guys it, have decent benefits. It takes the national Congress to do that, not the state Congress. Oh, okay. But there's, uh, <laughs> yeah. there's, uh, I think, 25 bills going up that attack federal employees' retirement and benefits. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're really coming for that money. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's quite a few bills out there that basically would set it up so that our retirement pensions, we would be required to pay significantly more into our retirement pensions, and then when we would retire, we would get significantly less. Mm -hmm at the end. Um, yeah, th that's going across the board. I know folk, people that are working that are paying more for their health care and, the, and their uh, you know, co-pay and all that's going up. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So they can't even really afford to use it. Yeah. So they right. might as well not have it, but they can't go without it right. in case anything serious comes along. Mm -hmm. Also a great way to make money, right? And have people pay into an insurance plan that they can never take they advantage take of. Advantage. I mean, it's, yeah. it's yeah. perfect. It's like automotive. Yeah. You know, well, your automobile insurance, you, you know. never want to use it because yeah. then your rates go up. Yeah. And, and I've heard that uh, the health care you know, uh, healthcare has got what four lobbyists for every single person in Congress. You know, the healthcare industry in general. They've right. got that many people. And that's back just there. one industry. That's just right. one industry, and they got four people for every single person in the United States Congress mm -hmm. to lobby on their behalf. You know, no wonder our healthcare system is so expensive. Yeah, and you know, you think about it. So does the pharmaceutical companies and the, yeah. and the petroleum companies, the energy companies. They all have that probably the same number or more. Of course, they may, may some of those folks may be doing double duty for some of them, <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, that that uh, th that really explains what's going on. And there's a lot of efforts being made to change that with a move to amend and the pledge to amend, mm -hmm. and the different things that are going on. That but this stuff's all going to take a lot of time. And and uh, uh, I know that uh, talking to Jamie Partridge, I'm going to give a shout out to Jamie because he's the one that organized you three. Right. Yeah, Jamie. You three people yeah. to come in on a day's yeah. notice here to talk about this. Mm -hmm. There is some. Uh, isn't there some meetings going on or some decisions being made mm. like in a couple of weeks or something? Well, they keep getting delayed. There's the well, New Century <laughs> Bill, 1789, that's gotten close a couple times. Unfortunately, that contains numerous parts of that bill that would wreck the Postal Service. So if we, if they, we could amend it, parts of it, if we don't get it all right, any one of those things, like for example, five-day delivery, if we went to five-day delivery, that would probably open the door to privatization right there. And, and they're really going for that. In fact, Obama included five-day delivery in his uh, proposed budget this last time. So, yeah. you know, we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, N never mind that, that one of the best competitive advantages the Postal Service has is we're the only company in the entire country that provides delivery six days a week for the same cost every single mm -hmm. day. There's no surcharge, there's no markup. 
six days a week. Nobody else does that. And yeah, by no. eliminating a day of delivery, mm -hmm. you're killing one of your best competitive advantages. That yeah. just doesn't make business sense. And I remember, as I remember it, you don't deliver on Sunday, but you process on Sunday. Yeah, we mm -hmm. do. We do. So yeah. you're actually working seven days a week. Yeah. And yeah. that's why one of the biggest growing um, streams of income that the post office has is the delivery of uh, medicines, pharmaceuticals, especially to veterans. I deliver medicines from the v medicine from the VA hospital every single day of the week on my route to different veterans that live out there. And you start cutting back the days of delivery, a lot of the medication has got time limits on it. And mm -hmm. the FDA might step in and say, you know what guys, if you're only delivering five days a week, four days a week, and this stuff is sitting there not being delivered, we don't know if it's still gonna be as viable by the time it gets to them. Guess what, you're not gonna be able to do that anymore. And one of the biggest growing sources of income and revenue for the Postal Service could go away. Mm -hmm. it just it doesn't it just looking at it you know basic bottom line business sense a lot of what's being proposed doesn't doesn't add up it well, just doesn't, doesn't add up sense. for the uh, bottom line for the post office but it it uh, adds up it to adds the up bottom for, line. for bottom line you know, for yeah, it's, other it's corporations it's very successful and what are some of the you know you obviously UPS and you mentioned Kinkos what are some of the other uh, the corporate entities that would would uh, do well because of these bills well, there's all these uh, courier services now that are uh, popping up, like OnTrack delivery, CalTrack, all these little things with uh, scannable parcels, eBay type oh, parcels. Okay, there's sure. a bunch of those that just cropped up in the last couple of years. Yeah, in fact, mm -hmm. um, getting you, ready because they're kind of like vultures. Huh? Yeah, if you remember yeah. a few years ago, DHL, which is the private. Uh, corporation out of Germany was here in the US and a few years ago DHL in the US went bankrupt and disappeared. In the last month I've started seeing DHL trucks popping back up here in Portland, coming back and doing deliveries. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're, they're sensing that, hey, now's the time that we can finally get back in there and make it work. Mm -hmm. well, before we get to the phones, we're down to about a little over 16 minutes. I think I'd like to open up the phones and see if anybody wants to come on board. But uh, you might, we might go back over a little bit of what just a, a viewer who who's concerned about his post office and what, what they can do um, best thing you can do is uh, contact your senators contact your congressional representatives contact the president let them know that you value your six day a week delivery that you value having your post office open that you want to have service there for not only yourself but all your neighbors for your whole neighborhood I mean when we were talking earlier about the social impact, one of the biggest honors that I've ever had in my life is that I had one of my uh, elderly customers, she unfortunately passed away a few years back. And when she passed away, her family specifically asked me to speak at her funeral. Mm. Wow. Because I was the one person that every single day took time out to visit with her and knew her. And, and, and you know, I was, I for all practical purposes, I was like her, you know, her adopted son their grandson or yeah, something. yeah grandson yeah. and I mean that was a tremendous honor I mean and the other aspect I just a week ago or no I'm just about three or four weeks ago out on my route um, as I'm walking along I start smelling smoke look down the driveway mm -hmm. two garbage cans two of the big city garbage cans are on fire flames shooting about five feet high and they're about 10 feet from the garage, about 10 feet from the house, and they're just bursted up in flames, and nobody's around to see it. You know, I run, to run, grab my cell phone, get the fire department over there, get the thing put out before anything happens. I mean, stuff mm -hmm. like that happens all the time, where the one person that actually is there every day to be able to see these things mm -hmm. and kind of be extra eyes and ears in the streets, caring about the community, is the letter carriers, are the postal workers, and we've been doing that for you know, for as long as this has been a country. Mm -hmm. So what we got is a 200 year old uh, neighborhood watch. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it's not, those instances aren't uncommon really. No. Because in the postal record, which is the uh, monthly publication put out by the NALC, uh, quite often they have three and four page articles of instances where carriers have been able to step in and help their customers in, in danger. Yeah, mm -hmm. saving people's lives literally. Right. Well, well, you're out there eight hours a day. These things are going to happen. Yeah, you know, I don't know how many carriers you mentioned. What, 
uh, 20 here, 30 there, and you start mm -hmm. adding these all up. There's a couple thousand of them in Portland and, yeah. you know, 10,000 of them in L.A., and you start adding these up. There's hundreds of thousands of carriers all over the country. Well, mm -hmm. the post office is the largest civilian employer outside of Walmart. You got States. to throw that in there, right. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. outside of Walmart. Yeah. And the largest employer of veterans in the entire country, too. Right. That's something I was going to bring up earlier, and I kind of got by it. I remember that when people got out of the service after the Vietnam, they got five or ten point preference. Yeah. And uh, is that right. still going on? Yeah. They, they still get preference, but they haven't hired they're anybody. They're not hiring, so. Right. And veterans need jobs to transition back now more than ever. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we bring that up, and it's, it's such a need, but... You know, it's falling on deaf ears. Well, Brad, you're a veteran, right? Right. Yeah. And that's another thing. If if Congress would only address the issue of the uh, pre-funding retiree health benefits and the pension plans, uh, they could get the post office could get back to hiring veterans. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems to me that in order to make things uh, more viable and, and more uh, lucrative for a handful of corporations, they're not only going to destroy the post office, but they're going to they're going to really hamstring the communities in this country. Right. And uh, that is even probably more important. Oh. You know, how how everybody connects up ultimately is more important than you know uh, the the uh, uh, components of. Of, uh, of uh, passing their mail around or earning money or, or any of that. Oh yeah. It uh, that 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 community connection, uh, it just kind of sews the country together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, as living wage jobs go away, and it's there issue, there are more yeah. and more people going down the economic scale, the higher society's woes go up. Crime goes up. Bad health goes up. Lack of education goes up. You know, everything, as wealth inequality increases, all of society's problems increase as well. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Uh, if you were to hire, what's what's entry level hiring for the post office? I was brought in at two sixty five and a half an hour. Well, it's yeah. higher than that. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> know. Yeah, I don't know exactly. But it's a lot more than minimum wage, though. Yeah, it's right. definitely more than minimum well, wage. It's a living wage job. It is, and that's why people do it. That's why people show it. That's why all three of us, when we made the choice of joining the Postal Service, we did it because we looked at it and said, here's a job that I can go do good, hard, honest work and make a wage that I can, you know, have a house. I can have a family. I can get married, raise kids, and when I'm done working hard for 30, 35, whatever years, I can retire and, you know, have a comfortable middle class you know, middle working class type of life that, that, that we've earned. What was being done with the money that that, that, that that was being put aside for their retirement before this five and a half billion dollars a year? Do you think that might have been pillaged? No. Before? And uh, this was a cover well, I up? Think, I think that money was folded back into the service, at least part of it. Was it? All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of our equipment is really starting to fall apart. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's being run 24-7, pretty much. Yeah, and they're not upgrading, and, you know, it's... Well, that's part of the dynamic of, of, uh, of making it look like it's, a, it's not a, a viable operation anymore. Right, right, yeah. Not enough workers, not enough people on the window, kind of trying to make us look bad. Yeah. But, uh, but I think we should mention our uh, TE workers. We have workers mm -hmm. in the Postal yeah, Service yeah. now that are not fully employed. They're like kind of on a permanent probation status. And they've been doing this for five years. They've been working 10 hours a day, six days a week for five years. No health benefits. No health benefits. No, they, retirement, no retirement benefits. Right. No guarantees. Well, that's not temporary at all. At the, <laughs> end of, at the end of working for 360 days, they get laid off. For five days For or a something. full week so that they don't mm -hmm. have to provide them any of the benefits oh. and then they'll bring them back on if they so choose if they if they determine that they don't like them for one reason or another hey bye see ya we'll but, go find somebody mm -hmm. else off the street but post office huh yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> the exact same dynamic yeah and these people are uh, great people workers and they're they're very tired now and they deserve to be hired yeah right. they deserve much better before yes. they even bring in the, the vets or anything like they have that. five years of experience why wouldn't they be hired? Right. yeah that's exactly right yeah well we got low less than 10 minutes now so if anybody wants to call in and uh, ask questions and we've covered this subject and I'm sure there's some things we missed uh, but folks want to call in we got a phone number we've got nine minutes or so there you are 288-4442 and 288-4448 uh, folks would be willing to answer your questions or take your comments 
before we if we get a call or before we get the call there's a rally coming up that's right that's right. going to be when so i'm going to want to speak to that april 17th april 17th tuesday i think it is april yep. 17th mm -hmm. tuesday april 17th uh tax day we'll be down in front of the main post office on northwest broadway and hoyt uh out there letting the public know that you got to keep the service in the postal service and that the postal service is not re does not use taxpayer dollars and has not used any taxpayer money for 30 years. Those are our two primary messages because most people that you talk to automatically assume that the post office is, is, is like most other government agencies, a tax-funded agency. And it's not. Mm -hmm. We're funded by postage. Mm -hmm. Right. And they, and they also think, like we said earlier, that it's, it's going to hell because of the internet and all that. And, yeah. and some of these things that you just, uh, you just uh, you know, assume uh, it's not going on. Did I see a, yep, we do have a phone call. We'll get the first caller, you're on the air. First one's a little bumpy sometimes here. First caller, you're on the air. Hello? Hey, you're on the air, welcome Hello? to the program. Can, can you hear me? We can, you have a question oh, or comment? Right on, uh, yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for bringing these people on. Oh, uh, familiar been, voice, great. Kinda, yeah, <laughs> thanks Jim. Uh, uh -huh. it, uh, something that I've been kind of keeping my eye on uh, um, on this post office thing, uh, a couple years ago I was, uh, listening to i think her name is ruth goldway or goldway mm -hmm. uh postal yep. commission mm -hmm. yep. um person and uh she was uh, she touched on the uh the, the fleet issue like that you guys uh touched on a little bit the the, the fleet conversion mm -hmm. um and uh, either to natural gas or electric and using that as a basis to uh to uh, um uh, as you guys were saying build out the uh you know work out the bugs and and get this uh um Get, get off of the petroleum and uh, reduce the, uh, right. the expense for that. It's a great opportunity. Um, the uh, so you, you touched on that. I won't go farther on that. But um, the post office, uh, the postmaster general. Okay, uh, since the post office is not uh, funded through our taxes, what the heck is he there for? Our taxes are paying his wage, right? The postmaster general. Um, and so if the post office mm. is not uh, um, being run with our tax dollars, then I have I see no need for uh, Mr. Donahoe um, taking my money. Um, and then uh, the other thing was you mentioned a, a bill, 1789. Now is that a Senate bill or a House bill? It's and a that's Senate a, bill. a destructive bill. Um, and then you mentioned yes. also uh, uh, DeFazio's bill and uh, another one. And uh, I'll go to. Uh, I guess your guys' website and see which ones are the good bills, which ones are the bad bills, and uh, I'll finish with this. The uh, I watch a lot of C-SPAN, and they have the 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 House and the Senate both have absolutely no problem wasting our tax dollars mm -hmm. naming post offices, but when it comes to actually doing something to save the post office, I see no action there. Um, but I want to thank you three for uh, bringing this up, and I I sh I sure hope that. Uh, the clock runs out, and uh, the uh, the damaging bills uh, die on the floor, and uh, uh, until we can uh, get uh, better uh, elected representatives uh, to uh, take care of this. Thank you so All right, much. I appreciate the comments. Luck. Right on Thank comments. You. Yeah. So there are some good bills and some bad bills then. Yeah, right. the, the two good ones. Uh, Peter DeFazio's is House Bill three five nine one. Um, the good one in the Senate widens one of the people that put it forward, and that's a uh, Senate Bill. 1853. Um, those are the two. Those would be the two best ones. If those two went through, there there would be there'd be a pretty bright future for this country. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I saw the light flashing. We have another caller. We'll get the next caller up. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Yes. Um, thank you. At a Jobs with Justice steering committee meeting, um, I understood um, basically that there's a date like of June that they wanted to start closing the mailing centers and that they were actually pulling equipment out of the centers that are going to close. But then I've also heard things that um, because Oregon is a vote by mail state, we were going to get a little bit of a reprieve on that. Mm, and just let point. me say I've already called both of my Senators. Thank, uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All um, right. 
Good example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, any any response to? Okay, the date that the uh, the cuts are supposed to start taking effect is May fifteenth, right? Yeah. And that and Congress has to act in some way to help the post office. Uh, without, without Congress, without, without, without with Congress, these bills or something. right? Without Congress acting, the pre-funding issue is not addressed. And the post office still has the five and a half billion dollar payment to make. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and without so. Congress acting by May fifteenth, um, the post office is already moving full speed ahead with shutting these these processing plants down. Um, even though their own studies have shown that they will lose, like Tom mentioned earlier, five point two billion dollars in just the first year with the closures they're proposing. Um, unless Congress does something that prevents them from being able to shut the plants down, they will. So, so gathering from what you're saying, and this this uh, postmaster general, whatever, and 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 the, and the the Congress has passed these bills or passed these laws, however, that's going to start doing some attrition with the with the processing plants and the different things that are going on. And unless Congress steps forward and fixes what they did, uh, this is going to continue. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's uh, boy, that's pretty scary when you got to expect Congress to do anything. But is, is, this a, is this partisan issue at all? Yes and no. In the past it wasn't. In the past it didn't matter which <laughs> side of the house you were on, most people could understand and saw the value of it. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at the majority of the Republican um, congressmen and most of their districts are very rural. And those mm -hmm. are the people that are going to suffer the most. Good point. I mean, if, if, in my opinion, if I was a representative of a, of a primarily rural district, like I'd Walden. be doing everything I could to get out there and protect my people. And the best way to do that is to keep the post office up and viable. So there, there is. You know, we're not going to reach Walden's ears right here, but folks out there and, and uh, the viewers, you must have friends in Central Oregon, Southern Oregon, you know, Ashland. Yeah, yeah he's mm -hmm. the only guy not on board in the yeah. state of Oregon. And, uh, yep. And he's the one that has the most rural mm -hmm. uh, Republican, you know, you drive to any parts of these states, this state during election time, and uh, you get outside the Willamette Valley, and it's all, it's all Republican, McCain or whoever. Yeah. And uh, th that's something that uh, it's really good. We got about a minute and 30, so anybody want to um, sound well, bite or two the, here? The other, the other uh, representative that we need to get a hold of and get on board is right across the river in Vancouver. Uh, what Herrera? Herrera Butler. Butler. Ah. She's not on board with things, and she's a brand new uh, right. Republican representative they for gonna, Southern Washington. They're going to close the processing plant over there. Uh, I don't think they have one in Vancouver, do they? I think that's they use we do their plant. Yeah, so we that's, do that's, their oh, that's a pretty big city as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, we're down to about a minute. I want to thank the crew uh, that have uh, manned the cameras and, and uh, the control room. I want to thank the callers. I especially want to thank the guests that have brought the, the passion for their, not just their job, but, but uh, their occupation, but their vocation as well. You know, you're, you're devoted to, to providing a community service, not just deliver mail. And uh, anybody got, uh, you know, a few seconds of... Might want to talk about the rally or something. You know? Yeah, Yeah. Um, April 17th, um, 5.30 to 6.30, down at the main post office, uh, Northwest Broadway in Hoyt. Um, come on out, uh, be seen, make sure that people get in, get their taxes taken care of without any difficulties, but let them know that we're a tax reorganization. We're here to keep the service in the postal service. All right, well, that's about it. We have about 10 seconds left. Uh, appreciate you folks coming on and talking about this. It's it's an issue that uh, is not getting the proper coverage. So I hope we did a good job with this. Yeah. Appreciate Thank it. Thank Thanks you. for tuning in. We'll be back next week. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you.